We've been changing the way we think about health in the last few decades. Instead of just relying on cure, there's now more emphasis on trying to prevent illness. And the same idea is being applied to crime. And one of the most important concepts here is situational crime prevention. Situational crime prevention is, refers to a group of strategies um, which are targeted at highly specific types of crime. For example, vandalism on buses or burglary. Um, and these strategies tend to, are targeted at reducing opportunities for crime, reducing the rewards from crime and increasing the risks for offenders of being caught. CCTV cameras, improved street lighting and speed bumps on roads are all familiar everyday examples of situational crime prevention strategies. Situational crime prevention really came into popularity in the Home Office round about the 70s. Uh, the then head of the Home Office, uh, who's now Professor Ron Clark, um, really saw this as a means for hard-pressed practitioners just to do something about crime. Not look at the causes of crime or the motivations behind it. Let's just make it harder to commit. But how does situational crime prevention work? And how can sociologists find out? We're going to look at an example here. Relighting the streets. Dr. Kate Painter of the Cambridge Institute of Criminology is the country's leading authority on street lighting and crime. One of her many studies was done in Stoke-on-Trent. The aim was to investigate whether improvements in street lighting had any impact on crime, either to increase it or decrease it, or whether it had no effect at all. To do this, the researchers had to identify an experimental area that was to be relit, an adjacent area nearby, and a control area that would be unaffected by the new lighting. Households in all areas were selected randomly from the electoral register, giving over 700 addresses, and the individual respondents were chosen randomly from within each household. Participants were then asked a series of questions about whether they had been the victims of crime. So, for example, in the last 12 months, has anybody broken into your home and stolen something for burglary? Um, has anybody attempted to go into your home? So we asked about theft, burglary, vandalism to cars, vandalism to property. And we also asked pers about personal offences, street robbery, violent crime, um, bag snatches. And we also asked about sexual harassment in public places. The experimental area was then relit. We introduced high pressure sodium. High pressure sodium lights tend to be the white lighting, uh, white type of lighting. Um, as opposed to the low pressure sodium that was there, uh, which is the orange type of lighting. And it, the public do tend to prefer white lighting to orange lighting. But as well as the type of light, we actually upped the level. So we went from, as one guy said to us, it was like having a candle around here, to really taking it up. So it was a marked, marked increase. We didn't just take it up a bit. A year later, in what's called a panel study, exactly the same people were then re-interviewed. Had the new street lighting made a difference to crime and people's fears of crime in the experimental area? Well, the general results were that crimes of all types decreased, except for burglary in Stoke on Trent. Uh, fear of crime, all the measures that we used uh, showed a marked improvement. Quality of life measures which everybody talks about quality of life, but very few people have actually operationed it. Basically, fear of crime lessened, crime reduced. It didn't go away altogether, but there were marked reductions. I think it went down by a quarter, 26% in Stoke. But a common criticism of situational crime prevention is displacement. That is, even if it does reduce crime in one area, it simply moves it somewhere else. So did the researchers look at this? we did not get displacement, we actually got a diffusion of benefits. We actually got a reduction in crime in the surrounding areas. So while crime decreased by 26% in the experimental area, it also decreased by 21% in the adjacent area. So how did the researchers explain this? 
fortunate because we had the um, pedestrian counts, counting the number of people. Of course, to get to the relit area, more people were using it, but they were walking from their houses in the areas that we hadn't relit. And more people on the streets can have a crime preventive effect, more eyes and ears, more would-be witnesses, more would-be bystanders who would intervene should you be attacked. So it seems that in the right place at the right time, situational crime prevention measures, like better lighting, can help to reduce crime. But they're not a solution. There is no solution to crime. And in these areas, although the reductions were significant, they were down 26%, um, it still left something like 33% of households being victimised. It doesn't solve the crime, but it can make a dent in it.